How's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna go ahead and start diving into some of the basics to Layer 2 VPN. And we're gonna start off with one of the easiest things to understand in terms of how the router actually does its job in terms of bridging. So, without having to create any connections between multiple routers, we're going to allow R2 and R3 to communicate with each other through CSR3. And the way we're gonna do this is what they call local bridging or local switching. So if you're familiar with the VLAN creation on a switch, where you create a VLAN and you place two ports in that VLAN, and then whatever's attached to those ports is able to communicate with each other, same concept applies here. The only thing we're doing is we're going globally, kind of like you would have with Frame Relay, doing your Delsi to port mapping. Here, we're just mapping a port to a port. So we're basically passing through the data transparently between the routers. So let's go ahead and take a look at the config. It's pretty straightforward. We're gonna go to router two, and we're gonna go ahead and get him configured. So I'm gonna jump up here and uh, host name, whoops. Host name will be, will be R2, and the interface gig zero slash zero. I'm gonna go ahead and no shut that interface and bring it online. I'm gonna do the same thing for CSR3. In this case here, it's gonna be R3. We're gonna to go to interface gig one and type in no shut. I'm gonna type in host name is gonna be R3 in this case. And what we're gonna do is a interface gig one IP address of 10.2.3.3 slash 24. And on router two, we're gonna do a IP address of 10.2.3.2 slash 24, okay? Now on CSR3, this configuration is actually very, very simple. You go to global config, and we have to make sure that we enable interfaces gig four and five. So interface gig four, no shut, and gig five, no shut. So pretty straightforward stuff that from that perspective. What we're gonna go do now is we're gonna type in the connect command. We're gonna give it a name. We're gonna type in uh, layer two VPN. And then we're gonna say from gigabit four to gigabit five, and that's it. That's all you're doing, okay? There's nothing really in here to do other than to shut down the connection, which we're not gonna do. If we do a show connect, we can see that the connection is up. So if I go to router two and I do ping 10.2.3.3, after it ARPs, I should have ping reachability, do show ARP, and I have connectivity, which is verified that this MAC address matches on, CS on router three. So do show interface gig one. And if you look up here at the top, we have 5000012000000. Guess what? That, match, that matches the MAC address in the ARP. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how simple layer two bridging can be. So that's pretty much the basics to that. Now there's a couple of other variations that come into play as well. So pretty straightforward stuff. As you can tell, the ping worked and everything else is good. There's another variation of this known as the, the bridge domain. So we'll get more familiar with bridge domains in an upcoming set of videos. So the concept of the bridge domain is really no different than that of a VLAN, where you go in, you, you create the bridge domain, and then you place ports inside of the bridge domain, and then uh, go from there. So let's go ahead and take a look at exactly how that's gonna look. So we'll go in here and type in bridge-domain, and we're gonna give it a, a number. We'll give it uh, 23 for routers two and three. And then underneath here, you just need to specify the member. So we'll type in member, and then we'll specify uh, gigabit, and then we'll say one or uh, gigabit four, um, and then a service instance of 23, and we'll do gigabit five, service instance 23. So that means that they're in the same service instance, and they'll be in good shape there. So that's pretty much all that that really requires. There is, um, not much more to it than that. And then what we just have to go to do is interface range gig four through five and type in service 
in uh, service dash instance uh, service. Oh, it doesn't won't, won't let me do it in uh, range mode. So interface gig four service uh, instance. We'll type in 23 e is Ethernet, and the encapsulation will be just default. So we'll, we won't care what the actual VLAN ID is that is being sent to us. We're just going to go in here and take whatever. I'm going to do the same thing for gig 5. Hit the up arrow a couple times, service instance 23, and then encapsulation is default. So by doing that, show bridge dash domain, we have both ports are... Uh, should be up and running and we might have to do some manipulation, but we should be okay So if I go back to router 2 and I try to do that ping again It should work relatively easily and if I go back to CSR 3 I, You can see that there is communication between them. So we're learning the associated uh, MAC addresses on those specific devices so basically what's happening here is the bridge domain has been created right so let's go ahead and let's do a show run um, section bridge domain and all we're doing is we're creating a basically a VLAN and then we go underneath this guy and we map who's going to connect to us where in a VLAN you would create the VLAN and then you go underneath the interface and say I'm going to join this particular VLAN very simple concept so once you've done that and you've created the bridge domain and you've gone and uh, pulled in the member interfaces and then you go underneath the member interfaces, so show run interface gig four and you do gig five, you can, as you can see the configuration is very straightforward. But we can be more granular. Now what's cool about this is now you've had a basic exposure to a bridge domain. Right, so now you know the concept the of the bridge domain. Now you know the concept of the VLAN. So they are they're basically one of the same, right? They work together very very well. Um, the difference, the thing that you'll find with bridge domains later on, is when you, when we get into technologies like VPLS, virtual private LAN service, where bridge domains are used to do MAC address learning and propagation, and things like that. So. That's the only other thing that comes into play here that's a little bit unusual is how that's bridged together. We'll talk about that more when we actually get into VPLS. But this is one of those concepts that once you understand what's actually happening, it's very, very easy to work with. So the bridge domain is actually very, very popular. So the way I'm showing you is the new configuration. There is an older configuration, but I'll show you that at a later point in time. But uh, right now, this is where the majority of your newer service providers are going, at least in my experience, most service providers that I've worked with, that's the construct that they use for doing any type of layer two VPN type of operation. So, um, and it does work. The cool thing is, is now unlike the connect capability, uh, here you actually get to see what MAC addresses are being learned. Now this is locally significant, right? If I had pseudo wires configured to other routers, and I was doing like a manually configured VPLS type of design, then you would see pseudo wire connections to other connections. So the, uh, so the other routers that are learning in MAC address information and then using pseudo wires to pipe that information from one router to another. We'll talk about that more in detail later. But one of the, uh, one of the capabilities here that I wanna talk about briefly is the ethernet flow point or EFP. Now basically that is going to be a construct that was made up a number of years ago. And the idea is to move away from the XConnect mindset where XConnect was very limiting. You didn't have a ton of feature capabilities and things like that. Ethernet flow point allows a lot of additional capabilities like uh, specific VLAN tagging, longest match tagging, so on and so forth. So, and I can bring in a specific tag and swap out for a different tag. So, there's a lot of different capabilities that come into play with how all this stuff works. We're going to be diving down those rabbit holes as we proceed. But the main thing that I want you guys to understand and take away from this is that whether you're using the connect command or you're using the bridge command, it really doesn't make much of a difference. So, 
the idea here that I want to just touch uh, briefly on, if we go to interface gig four and you have the service instance command, service instance, and you type in you know 23 and you say ethernet, you come underneath here, there's a number of different ways that you can do this. So you notice how down here bridge domain, if I was to type in bridge domain and I could type in 23 and do the command this way as well. So if I was to actually get out of here and uh, do show run section bridge and remove the bridge domain configuration. So this this specific command right here with the uh, then tying the member interfaces to the bridge domain globally makes it more modular. So I can kind of mix and match as I'm going along where now I'm going globally and I'm tying the interface to the global construct versus going to the interface level and tying the bridge domain to the interface. So this one here makes it more modular, where the interface level is more specific, right? So it's definitely more complicated to troubleshoot and things like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and here and delete the bridge domain. I'm gonna go into uh, interface gig four and type in uh, service instance 23 ethernet and then bridge domain, we'll type in 23. And then there's a split horizon option here. We don't really need to worry about that too much. Now if I go to gig five and do the exact same thing and do this and do show run interface gig four, you can see a different configuration, right? Now if I come out of here and I do a show bridge dash domain, same concept applies, right? Really nothing has changed. So if I go back to router two and I hit the up arrow and I ping, I go back to router three and I hit the up arrow, you'll, you can see it's the same look and feel. It's just two different ways of configuring it, right? So one way you create the bridge domain globally, and then you go to the interface level and then you tie the service instance to it, where you, and you can really call whatever service instance you want. The bridge domain and the service instance are kind of, they don't have to match, but it makes it easier to correlate down the road. It's like, you know, for example, if you're dealing with, I've just started diving into a little bit of voice, where if you don't tie things correctly, to your directory numbers, things get a little hard to troubleshoot. So here it makes it easier to work with when you have a scenario where you're tying things together the way that they need to be tied. So for an example of this would be this. Interface gig four, we're gonna type in, uh, let's go ahead and interface gig four, and we'll type in no service instance 23 ethernet, right? And then we're gonna type in uh, service instance We'll type in four ethernet. And then we're gonna type in bridge um, underneath here. Uh, it would be the, the encapsulation we have to call is gonna be default. And then underneath here, we'll be able to specify the bridge domain down the road. There's also the X connect down here as well, but we're not really gonna dive into that right now. So bridge dash domain, and we can call uh, 23. And then we can go to interface gig five, for example, so interface gig five, do show run interface gig five, and we can pull this guy off, and then we type in service instance five, uh, ethernet, excuse me, and then encapsulation default, and then bridge domain 23, and hit the enter key, and then if we jump out of global config and do a show bridge dash domain, it's there, right? The 23 is is there, but we have EFP4. And if we go back to two and we hit the up arrow, the ping's gonna work. We go back to CSR3, we can see that EFP5. But because of the fact that we've used two different service instances, and we can see that, service instance four, service instance five, is tied to bridge domain 23. It doesn't really make much of a difference how you configure it, as long as you tie the logic. The bridge domain is the um, is the the big deal here as long as that's there then you'll be in really good shape so we'll talk more about some of the other capabilities that come that work with this later on down the road but for right now that's basically what i wanted you guys to see so until next time guys thanks so much for stopping by and we'll catch you guys in the next video